All right, hi guys. Um, I'm glad that you were able to find this online. Um, so you should have this paper out in front of you. We're going to go over the first part of photosynthesis. And as you should have known, um, there's actually two parts of photosynthesis. Um, hopefully you learned this in biology. But the first part is what we call a non-cyclical light reaction. Um, part of photosynthesis, it comes first because it's the first thing that accepts the sun's energy. And that's what you're looking at right now. Now the products, the products of these light reactions are actually going to go on to the Kelvin cycle. And that's the cyclical part of photosynthesis and also the second half of it. So in this I want you to keep, keep in mind uh, the equation for photosynthesis and what the plant actually needs. It needs CO2 and we'll see that again in the Calvin cycle. It needs light and it also needs water in order to perform photosynthesis. So um, light and water is what the light reactions actually use right away and then again we'll see carbon dioxide um, later on in the Kelvin cycle. But um, what I'd like you to do is just take a quick moment. I'm going to just give you a quick tour of what some of these parts mean. Um, at the bottom here, you'll see um, that these are labeled photosystems. And that's what these big boxes are. These big boxes are photosystems. Um, and this would actually be photosystem number two. And you can go ahead and label these um, as I've done. And then the box on the right is photosystem number one. And the reason that number two is labeled first and then number one is labeled secondly is because they actually discovered photosystem number one first and then they discovered photosystem number two and then they realized, oh, photosystem number two is actually the one that is directly impacted by uh, the sunlight that the plant receives. So it just it's labeled by which one was discovered first and not necessarily which one comes first so just something to remember that they're kind of reversed in that way so I'm just gonna move this a little bit over here make it a little bit bigger this arrow over here um, actually represents as we go up in height on this document, um, that actually represents the amount of energy that the electrons actually capture. Um, or I shouldn't say capture, but um, as we go up this page, the amount of energy that electrons have will increase. So I'd like you to just write that on the line there that the energy, this represents energy of electrons. All right, and we're going to actually pull this down, and I want to start up here. So one of the first things, in addition to light, um, that the plant is going to need to do photosynthesis is water. And we need to get some products out of water. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to split water. And when we split water, a couple of things are going to happen. We're going to get two electrons out of that. And these two electrons are really important. They're actually going to go through the entire first stage, um, both the light reactions of photosynthesis. And then the other thing we're going to get out of water, obviously, if we got two electrons, we also have some hydrogen that we're going to get out of there and some oxygen. So we're going to get two hydrogen ions right there. And we're also going to get some water. Some, I'm sorry, some oxygen, okay? And I'm going to put a little half there. That just means that that's been re reduced or released. So we're going to get two hydrogen ions out of splitting water. We're also going to get um, a reduced oxygen out of there. But the really important one that we're going to get are these right here, these two electrons. Um, oxygen, the oxygen we're not going to really use just yet, but keep in mind that we have these two floating hydrogen ions floating around. So we're at, just like cell respiration, some of those things stick around and we use them for later. That's exactly what's going to happen with these two hydrogen. So these two electrons are actually going to um, start us off a little bit here. So these two electrons are actually going to supply these two molecules. These are called P680 chlorophyll A. I'll just put CA down for you. Chlorophyll A molecules. And chlorophyll A is um, the P680 molecules are actually going to trap those two electrons inside of it. Okay, And we'll come back to that in a second. But one other thing that we need for photosynthesis, other than CO2 and water, is we do need a source of light. And I'm just going to make a little sun here. 
So here's our source of light. So our light in the form of charged packets of energy called photons are actually going to hit our plant's leaves, our, the green plant, the green parts of the leaves, and obviously those are going to be packed with chloroplasts. Well, those chloroplasts are basically pigments. Green pigments are going to absorb that light, and that light's going to basically bounce from one pigment to another until it hits one of the two or both P680 chlorophyll A molecules. Remember, those P680 molecules have been storing up electrons. So as that light bounces from those pigments up to those P680 molecules, it's those P680s are going to get really, really excited because they're getting charged with some energy. And what happens is those electrons that are inside of there, they get really excited and they shoot up above. Now, where are they actually going? They're actually going to what we call a primary electron acceptor, which is this little guy right here. So that primary electron acceptor is a molecule that's going to accept electrons. And those electrons came from the P680 chlorophyll A molecules. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, we're already up here with our electrons. So our electrons have a bit of energy that we could use and release to make another type of molecule. So, I just want to point your attention this way. This is the first electron transport chain that we're going to see. There's actually two of them, um, but this is the first one. And the way that we're going to get these electrons to release some of their energy so that we can use them later or um, we can make a different product is by allowing those electrons to fall down the electron transport chain, okay? So they're gonna hit a couple of different um, types of molecules. So the first one is plastoquinine, and basically we just kind of say it's a PQ molecule for short. So the PQ molecule, just like the other ones, is going to accept those electrons as they come. And when they accept the electrons, they're actually gonna be reduced, meaning that it's gonna become more negative because it's ex actually accepting a negatively charged molecule or, or an electron in this case. So once it hands it off to the cytochrome complex down here, it's actually going to become more positive because it's actually getting rid of some of that negatively charged energy. So it's going to become oxidized. Now cytochrome complex is also going to accept those electrons in, the, in which case it's going to become more negative so it's going to be reduced. And then once it hands it off to the PC, um, it's going to become oxidized. Now the PC is what we call plastocyamine. Um, again, it's just another um, molecule, another protein um, that is responsible for accepting electrons and then passing them on. And again, it too will become more negative or become reduced. And then once it hands it off, it'll become kind of go back to its original state and become oxidized again. Now, remember, once this is all happening, we're actually the electrons are actually losing, because it's, it's going down now, it's losing energy. So that energy can actually be used to make ATP. Down here, that's our energy symbol. So as those electrons fall down this electron transport chain, that energy that it's losing is actually, remember, we can't destroy or create energy, we can only change its form. So it's actually going to go into making ATP. Now what happens to those electrons? Remember we have two electrons that have been kind of going down this chain, okay, releasing some energy. Well, they're actually going to go into photosystem number one. And photosystem one, number one, remember, is not in direct contact with um, a primary light source such as the sun. So um, regardless, however, it still needs to give these two molecules here the two electrons um, that we got from splitting water. So these two electrons, um, I'm sorry, these two molecules here are actually another form of chlorophyll A. We call these P700 uh, chlorophyll A molecules. So, and just like in photosystem 2, these P700 uh, chlorophyll A molecules are going to store up those electrons and wait until they can send them off. So, how, where do we, if we're not really 
in direct contact with the sun, how do we get these little guys, these little pigments, how do we get them excited so that we can excite the P700? Well, we have what we call basically a light harvesting um, source. And I'm just going to put light H for light harvesting. So that light harvesting source is basically going to just kind of harvest sunlight, essentially, and just kind of store it until uh, Photosystem 1 needs it. So what's going to happen is that light energy is going to finally release some stored up light energy. And just like in Photosystem 2, that light energy is going to bounce from one pigment to another to another until it gets to the P700, which again are storing those two electrons that we got from splitting water that have traveled all the way through Photosystem 2 and then down the electron transport chain, making ATP, and now they're at the P700 molecule. So I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. So now we're at that P700 molecule. Um, these P700s get really excited, um, electrically charged because of that light energy that was harvested. And it's going to shoot those two electrons. It's kind of backwards, sorry. But those two electrons, um, let's do it that way. Those two electrons are going to go back up to the primary electron acceptor, which is the same thing that Photosystem 2 has. And again, we're looking at the rooftop here, so those electrons have quite a bit of energy now that they have that they can actually release. So I'm going to move this over a little bit because now we're looking at, this is our second electron transport chain. Okay, So we've got these two electrons up here with lots of energy, and we need to release some of that energy. So um, we're going to travel down this electron transport chain, and we're going to, again, basically reduce ferrodoxin here, which we are just going to short-term FD. And then once ferrodoxin actually hands those two electrons off to NADP reductase, which, again, if you take a look at that ASE, that means it's an enzyme, um, that ferrodoxin is going to be reduced because again it's giving up its electronegativity there it's it's a you know negatively charged electrons um and then it's going to reduce NADP because it's that enzyme is obviously accepting more negative energy now the NADP reductase also receives some other things in addition to those two electrons okay it receives some NADP plus, and it also gets two hydrogen ions, okay? So those two things go in, okay? Can, can you kind of see, remember, enzymes are dealing with reactions, so we've got a couple of different um, reactants here. We've got some electrons, we've got some um, NADP plus, we've got some um, couple of hydrogen ions that, remember, where do we get those from? Well, we got those from earlier on from splitting water. Um, so let's keep going here to show you what happens during that reaction. So NADP reductase is this enzyme that's going to make this reaction go. So basically what we get out of here from giving it the two electrons, the NADP plus, and the two hydrogen ions, we get the products, of course, NADP plus, I'm sorry, NAD, can't spell today, sorry guys. NADP, and if it's going to pick up hydrogen, then you got to add the H, okay? NADPH, but we only used one of the H's, so it also gets a lonely little H plus ion, okay? Now remember, once it picked up that hydrogen ion, it's carrying an electron. So it's, remember, the NADs, and even here, P for plant, that's how I like to remember it, but NADP plus. Um, is a carrier, an electron carrier. So you can assume then that we're going to be using these products for the Kelvin cycle. So these are actually going to go on to the second half of photosynthesis. So I hope that kind of covers everything um, for this first part and everything kind of makes sense. So um, if you need to, you can obviously watch it again. And if you have any questions, um, we'll take care of those on Monday. So let me know if there's anything I can do to make this um, process a little bit easier for you. Um, thanks.
Sigue esa mande. <risa>